IBM, new Power 10 platform. You wrote a great Forbes piece about it. Let's uh, let's kick us off. That sounds great. A little background. So um, IBM has two hardware platforms. Uh, one is the mainframe, and uh, which is called Z, and the other is called Power, and which is a a smaller um, a configuration. But it, it's it's not. Uh, necessarily what I consider uh, high volume, what it is is these are designed, the platforms are designed for mission critical. So the highest levels of reliability, the highest levels of security, and have some super uh, unique features in them. Uh, I, I made an initial mistake, uh, actually on the Power 10, actually has eight threads uh, per core, uh, integrated uh, machine learning uh, inference, uh, heavy duty memory capabilities that really transcend what any other processor has has out there. Uh, Daniel, I talked to uh, a couple power customers at uh, IBM's recent event, and they were complaining that after five years, they had to reboot uh, one of their systems. And I was just thinking, <laughs> you realize that if you had an x86 server, you'd probably have to do that once a month. but. This is the type of expectations that these, these customers have. Uh, one of the key um, operating environments that uh, Power 10 and Power Architecture as a whole does well in uh, is, is SAP. Um, SAP uh, loves threads. Uh, it loves a huge memory planar surface and a, a huge, um, um, it, it eats memory up. And I think we, we learned that, uh, especially when we uh, looked at um, what Intel-based systems did with some of their non-volatile memory solutions. But uh, what was the announcement about? So they already came out with uh, what was called a, a, a 1080 uh, before, but uh, what they brought out was uh, a, new, uh, a new platform, uh, an S1014 equivalent to the two socket systems that uh, really focus on a virtualized infrastructure. By the way, the other thing that I'll, I'll put in there that uh, performance uh, compared to com uh, performance using um, uh, containerized environments, it is an absolute uh, uh, beast. And it would make sense given Red Hat and what it brings to the table that IBM would architect a system that's, that's focused uh, on that. So, uh, four new, four new platforms. Uh, typically, bigger uh, configuration. You've got four socket. You have eight socket. Uh, these things are are real beasts. And by the way, this type of um, pace was very similar to what they did with Power Nine, which is hey, let's bring lower configurations out first, and then let's bring the the beasts out out second. And you know, eight socket, four socket systems take a lot more testing, um, so this would completely uh, make make sense. So, uh, one thing that I like too, they went right after x86, basically saying that it performs, you know, 3.6 better than an x86 equivalent. And TCO, by the way, we didn't run, uh, we didn't do the TCO analysis or the benchmarking, but uh, talks about uh, TCO. Uh, improvement of 50% over x86 uh, equivalents. Yeah, you know, I got an early, uh, got some early look at the at this before, and as I kind of read through it, Pat, what I what I really like is that IBM, and you talked about this a little bit with the ARM um, instance, is seemingly really becoming more prolific at understanding its role, understanding its customer archetype, and understanding how to build products. That satisfy, not necessarily coming out at that entire general x86 market, but understanding that they have very specific workloads that they do better, that they meet whether it's price power, whether it's meeting you know uh, very sp very specific needs of enterprise customers, and I think they keep finding these white spaces. And by the way, I think that's a that's a good strategy. Um, it's working. We're seeing it over the last few quarters and the results of the company. Um, you know, of course, when they do hardware and they do hardware. <clears throat> you know, cycles, they get these jolts of revenue and then the, the hardware revenue cycles fade off. We see it a lot with the Z products, Pat. But I think uh, 
I think you hit it pretty, you know, you, you hit it pretty square on there. And that was kind of my sentiment here is, you know, they're, they're just kind of hitting this right zone in the price performance space. And they kind of have their customer well locked in. They're going after it. You know, the, you did mention like kind of in the comparable. And, and, and I do wonder sometimes, is IBM going to go bigger? Are they going to go for more market share? Are they going to get more aggressive? Are they going to expand? Um, but I, I think... You know, and by the way, you've worked closely with Power a lot longer than I have. But I get, I just get the feeling that they kind of like, they're like, we know who our, we know who our buyer is, we know who our customer is, and we're going to keep, we're going to keep building for that particular customer, um, and we're going to do it really well, and we're going to execute, and we're going to, you know, just kind of be over here and be happy with this kind of piece of the market that that we have. And I don't know if you sensed anything otherwise. I mean, I'm not not trying to deflect but just it kind of was my take as i was reading this it's not oh, listen they're not they're, they're not going after the volume x86 markets now yeah. I, I, you know they, they ran that play a couple of years ago in fact they had google signed up google had moved their entire stack to uh, not moved it but ported their entire stack to i think it was power eight maybe it was power nine and really going after trying to get the top of the intel stack and then and then they they pull back but what i get the sense is is that they are very focused on their current customers and uh keeping them happy uh with with everything not giving them a reason to to move off the platform and i don't think ibm would be doing it if it weren't a very profitable uh business and it's not just pushing boxes right you have services you have software you have applications you have everything that that goes with it and uh, i gotta tell you this is not i don't feel like this is a customer lock-in i think when i hear customer lock-in I, I i hear you know you're not delivering that somebody values long term right but ibm is delivering things that their that their power customers uh, appreciate long term i mean you, you don't have to reboot the system for like five years i mean it's it's completely ridiculous uh ridiculous in a, in a, in a fun way Right. Yeah. But they're executing on their strategy. Yeah. And I mean, I, I guess I just, you know, you've been tracking a long time. I've been, uh, you know, looking at this a little bit more closely over the last year. And so it just kind of my immediate observation is know their lane, execute within their lane. And by the way, this has been a really successful strategy over the last couple of years for the company of what they've done in cloud, hybrid cloud. I mean, you mentioned about like, you know, they're not doing the traditional go to market, we're going to try to compete with all the hyperscalers that are kind of partnering in a lot of cases. In this case, they're kind of like, we've got these workloads and these particular enterprise needs that we meet <laughs> and we make these customers really happy and we're going to stay there and we're going to grow that, but we're not going to lose sight of our business strategy and lose business trying to go after things that we ne aren't necessarily either best at or aren't necessarily wanting to compete in these particular areas. Which, by the way, it, it takes a company a little bit of humility to, to see the market that way. And I think it's working pretty well for them. So credit to them.